Dozens of Russian hackers silently bypassed the security and took over the whole nation. From controlling the media to hijacking the government and stealing elections, they crippled Georgia for many years to come. Until one guy, Georgi Ishvili, a cybersecurity expert, exposed these Russians and gave his country a chance to fight. However, what he didn't know, they wanted him to catch them and he was playing by their rules. This is the shocking story of a silent war when Russian hackers tried to hack the whole country. The scale of this attack is something we haven't seen before, said Alan Woodward. And that is true, because when Russia pulled this silent war against Georgia, for many reasons, this was one of the most complex and sophisticated schemes ever. And this is for, I want you to look at this map. You'll see two very important things. First, Georgia is one of the neighboring countries to Russia. And second, with this particular location, this is a gateway region connecting Europe and Asia, as it is connected to not just Russia, but also Turkey, Armenia, and Azerbaijan, making its position critical. Moreover, through the Black Sea, this country is integral to energy supply routes to Europe. Russia knows this too, and it wants to control this country at any cost. Because if it wants to eventually rule the world, this country will be a valuable asset. Not only will it safeguard one of Russia's borders, but also by blocking Europe's energy routes, the Kremlin can create pressure on Europe. However, this dream to rule began to fade when reports revealed that Georgia may escape Russia's control forever. According to an NDI poll, between 2015 and 2019, for more than 80% of the Georgians wanted to become a part of Europe, and 75% wanted their country to become a part of NATO. This was a recipe for a big threat. If Georgia eventually was to become a part of either the European Union or NATO, Russia's plan to rule and control this country would have been over in moments. This is why, in this now or never situation, they launched one of the most sophisticated hacking campaigns to sabotage and compromise the country, handled by none other than Russia's most advanced and intelligence agencies, GRU and FSB, and their mission was one, take back control. It was 2017 when Russian hackers quietly infiltrated the key institutions of the country. Their plan was simple. They had to gain control over the country, and for that, they had to cripple it first. So in a matter of few months, Bloomberg investigation revealed that whether it was the foreign ministry, finance ministry, central bank, or key energy departments, or telecommunications providers, they were all penetrated and compromised. Russia was everywhere. The country was indeed in the hands of state-sponsored hackers. But why were they doing this? How did this control let them stop people from wanting to become a member of the European Union or NATO? But before I show you how and why, I want you to hold on to this point for a while, as I'll get back to this in a moment. For now, I want you to meet Georgi Ishvili. Importance of the critical infrastructure and its protection in Georgia is more than vital. He is a cybersecurity expert and worked not only with the Ministry of Internal Affairs of Georgia, but also with the Georgian Computer Emergency Response Team, also known as CERT. In 2020, he played a crucial role in first identifying that the Georgian systems were compromised and then collecting evidence that it was Russia. CERT and Georgi found out that approximately 300 to 400 computers within key government institutions were infected with malware, and it was spread across almost every government platform, including Georgia's state bank and election commission. And now, these systems had become a part of a botnet they called Jorbot, which was programmed to search for sensitive keywords such as USA, Russia, NATO, and CIA in Microsoft Word documents and PDFs. And once it found these words, it would quietly copy these files and send them to the hackers, revealing uncountable state secrets. Over time, this Georbot malware evolved as it gained capabilities such as recording audio and taking screenshots, which further enhanced its espionage potential. Team CERT had to do something substantial about it because just replacing the infected systems wouldn't have helped with the larger picture. So, they set a trap for the hackers by creating a zip archive labeled Georgian NATO Agreement. This file was designed to appear enticing, leading the hacker to download it. What he did not know was, this file contained a hidden spying program that CERT had developed. And, once the hacker downloaded and executed the file, CERT gained instantly access to his computer. They activated his webcam, capturing clear images of his face. This operation lasted about 5 to 10 minutes before the hacker likely realized he had been compromised and disconnected from the session. The team gained one Microsoft Word document written in Russian, and to everyone's surprise, it contained instructions from the hacker's handler over which targets to infect and how. Other circumstantial evidence pointing to Russian involvement included the registration of a website that was used to send malicious emails. Reports revealed that it was registered to an address next to the country's Federal Security Service, formerly known as the KGB. The investigation report said, 
quote, we have identified Russian security agencies once again. That's how they got to know who was behind this. But what if I tell you that Russia always wanted to get caught and it was part of their sophisticated plan? I'll show you why. Here, I want to take you back to the point I mentioned before. How would this let them stop people from wanting to become a member of the European Union or NATO? Is Georgia moving towards Moscow? Mass demonstrations have erupted in the country as thousands have taken to the streets in anti-government protests. Look, the only way public opinion or their desire to be called Europeans matters until they have the power to vote. Let's say between 2016 and 2020, the Georgian Dream Party was in power, led by the infamous billionaire oligarch Bidzina, also known for their pro-Russian policies. However, if the polls suggested that the public wants to go towards Europe, they will vote for the opposition and elect them for the upcoming government position. But but for instance, if you create an environment where whoever votes is bound to choose pro-Russian party, then there is no way you simply cannot win. And this is exactly how they did this in Georgia. According to many reports, the main agenda for the hacking was not to steal confidential data, but to instill fear and mistrust in the Georgian people. And this is what happened. From hundreds of articles to live protests, this country turned out to be a scared crowd. I want Georgia to live in Europe. I do not want to wake up in Russia. Bloomberg's mentions this Russian campaign significantly undermined public confidence in state institutions. Citizens became increasingly skeptical about the integrity of their electoral process and the ability of their government to protect national interests against foreign interference. With this victory, not only this party retained its position, but also the Kremlin's continued its control over Georgia. Just before the election of 2020, disturbing news surfaced that Russia had hijacked all the government systems, including the election commission and several other ministries. At one point, this did expose Russia for its involvement, but it did more good than bad. With this shocking news, voters not only got demoralized as their government was incapable of protecting itself, but also it created a sense of fear for Russia. This was everything that Russia wanted. On one side, fewer voters meant more control, and on the other, more fear was always going to be better for them. How? I'll discuss both of the points separately. Georgian Dream Party has a very strong voting base for those Armenian and Azerbaijan's communities. They even add up for the most of their voting bank. With this side secured, and if the newer generation who had more liberal views were not joining the elections, this was all good goings for the party. And this worked because when the 2020 elections were held, the total turnout remained at just 26%, allowing the Georgian Dream Party to win. With this victory, not only this party retained its position, but also the Kremlin's continued its control over Georgia. Georgia. Similarly, on the other side, Russia has been playing a dirty game of using fear as a tool to keep this region intact. Shota Gvineria, a senior researcher, published an article where he mentions that there are massive propaganda campaigns that try to project the war in Ukraine as a consequence of Ukraine's determination to align itself with the West. And not just that, he mentions that Russia is using fear to silence people from standing up against them. He continues, and I quote, The main point of the propaganda campaigns is not to convince Georgians that Russia is a better choice for them than the West. Rather, they are sowing fear and confusion by forcing a not-so-rhetorical question into the political discourse. If the West cannot defend Ukraine, can it defend Georgia or other partners? Liana is yet another Georgian voter. The Georgian dream calls for better relations with Russia. Yes, they should be improved. What do you think? Does it make any sense to fight? Moreover, there are many who think there is not one but two enemies for Georgia and its future. Because many argue that the Georgian Dream Party was itself involved in these cyber attacks. These cyber attacks played a strategic role in bolstering this party's position by creating chaos and uncertainty among opposition parties as well that were more pro-Western in their orientation. Giga Bakaria, a former secretary of Georgia's National Security Council and now the chairman of the opposition Federalist Party, argues that Russian actions in Georgia go beyond hacking and espionage efforts. He continued and pointed to Otar Partskaladze and said, This is a man who is a very close associate of our de facto ruler, oligarch Bidzina Ivanishvili. We know it from his own confessions. When he was sanctioned, the whole Georgian government and the state apparatus behaved embarrassingly to accommodate him, to clean out his bank accounts, to give him time before the sanctions could create any discomfort to him. He also mentioned that during the last 12 years, not a single Russian spy has been arrested in Georgia. So there's no way one can believe that Russian intelligence does not work here. So no, there are these multitude of examples that show that Russians enjoy complete safety. In short, we got to be very careful while building our points of view, because most of the time in these modern times, our perspectives are being nurtured and curated by these powerful entities. This story shows us so many things about the new world. 
However, I'll leave you to this for today. Also, don't forget to tell us what you think of Bidzina. Do you think he is involved in the crime of selling the future of Georgia to Russia?